The Supreme Court is getting ready to hear a case called NYSERPA, or New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. The question before the court is whether the Second Amendment guarantees the right to carry a firearm outside of the home. Well, the first eight presidents of the United States certainly would have thought the answer was unequivocally yes. Each of these men routinely carried guns in public during the founding era of our great country. When we get back, we're going to dive into the details and I will explain why the real life experiences of our first eight presidents are so important to protecting our rights today. Hey folks, I'm Mark. Welcome to the Four Boxes Diner. In the Hiller decision in 2008, the Supreme Court found that the Second Amendment protects the individual right to armed self-defense in the home. Now, right now, the Supreme Court is considering a case called NYSERPA, or New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, versus Bruin. Now, this case is going to determine whether we have a constitutional right under the Second Amendment to carry firearms for private self-defense outside of our homes. Now, one key question before the court is whether the Second Amendment was understood by our founding fathers. These are the men who actually created the Constitution and wrote the Second Amendment. Whether our founding fathers understood the Second Amendment to guarantee the right to carry firearms in public. So why do the lived experiences, the actual lifestyles of our founding fathers matter to whether you and I have a right to carry guns outside of our homes today in the 21st century? Well, it's really quite simple. You see, in the Supreme Court Heller decision, it taught us, it teaches us, including judges, by the way, that to determine the rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment, courts must first consider, of course, the text of the amendment, as well, though, as the history history surrounding that amendment. So what the founding fathers understood the second amendment to mean and to protect is highly relevant to these inquiries today. Now, right now, before the Supreme Court, there are some anti-gun activists who are arguing that the second amendment does not protect a right to carry a gun outside of the home. They say that when the founding generation adopted the Second Amendment, carrying guns in public was frequently, believe it or not, illegal, so they say. Now, there are a lot of problems with this anti-gunner argument, and we're gonna get to several of these in various other videos, including this one right now. One of the biggest factual hurdles that the anti-gun movement cannot overcome, in my view, is that the first eight presidents of the United States regularly carried firearms outside of their homes. That's right, each one of them. That would be George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, and even Martin Van Buren all carried firearms outside the home, and we know this from the historical record. Now let's take each of these men in order. To begin with, the father of our country, the man on the $1 bill, George Washington himself regularly used a gun for hunting and advised his grandson to do the same. Our second president, John Adams, was so fond of shooting that he would take his gun to school and would go shooting and hunting after his studies. Now Thomas Jefferson, our third president, carried pistols for self-defense when traveling. And he even designed a special wooden holster to hang on the uh, side of his uh, horse on the saddle from which he could easily uh, pull in and out his pistols. And Jefferson, uh, Jefferson's own advice to his nephew was to let your gun be your constant companion. That was Jefferson, the man, by the way, who wrote the Declaration of independence. Now our fourth president, James Madison, bragged that his aim was so good with a gun that he rarely missed a shot at 100 yards. Now remember, James Madison is not some random guy. Madison, in addition to being uh, the uh, president, was the man who originally drafted the United States Constitution. Sounds like today, given his great sh ability to shoot, maybe he'd have a gun video uh, channel on YouTube, but we'll never know now, will we? But we do know that Madison is really important for the Second Amendment. Our fifth president, James Monroe, would travel to school with his musket slung across his back. And as an adult, Monroe kept his pistols in his carriage whenever he traveled. Sounds like Carrie to me. 
John Quincy Adams, who was the son, of course, of President John Adams, also loved to hunt, and he repeatedly wrote in his diary about how he went out with his gun. And Andrew Jackson, the, the famous man who helped win the battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812, the Andrew, Andrew Jackson, again, our seventh president, famously said, and this is a great quote, I have never in my life seen a Kentuckian who did not have a gun, a pack of cards, and a jug of whiskey. And his actions reflect his point that he made in that comment. Because we know from Jackson's biographer, H.W. Brands, that in the year 1788, which is one year after the Constitution uh, had been signed, and three years before the Bill of Rights, including the Second Amendment, had become effective, we know that future President Andrew Jackson wrote about one of his trips saying, Quote, I had my saddle horse, a fine young stallion, and a stout pack mare carrying my personal effects. And for arms, Jackson carried, ready for this, a pair of pistols in his side saddle holsters. He carried a pistol worn on his belt, and he brought a new rifle. And that would be four firearms for those of you who were not counting. And finally, last but not least, our eighth president, Martin Van Buren, who served as president until the year 1841. Now, Van Buren was reported to carry two loaded pistols with him when he actually visited the United States Senate, all to help ensure that discussion stayed civil and tempers checked. Notwithstanding these historical facts from the time period of our nation's founding, some of the anti-gunners actually are still arguing that there was no right to carry guns outside of the home, and that in fact, it, in parts of the United States at the time, it was actually illegal to do so. Well, this debate is going to present the United States Supreme Court in the Bruin case with a very interesting choice, now isn't it? Either our first eight presidents were habitual criminals for carrying guns in public during their lives at the time of our country's founding, or the anti-gunner argument that early Americans were not allowed to carry guns in public during our country's founding is simply wrong, indeed absurd. Now on this question to wrap up, I'm gonna put my money on the lived experiences of our first eight presidents, including George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison. And I suspect, and I am hopeful, that the Supreme Court will understand this history of early American life the same way that I do. Thanks for joining me today, guys, at the Four Boxes Diner, where we serve hot, fresh Second Amendment news and analysis each day. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Thanks again from all of us at the Four Boxes Diner. Order's up, table 2A.